Okay, I think things are going to get messy, so let's clear your space and see what Tammy's going to do next. Alrighty. So I mentioned earlier walking through the pumpkin patch and seeing how they speak to me. Uh, see if I see a little creature or an animal in, in a shape. The other thing I look for is noting that you don't have to have the best looking pumpkin. The ones with mars and bruises and cuts and moldy spots are often something you can use to your advantage for a scarier pumpkin. Your pumpkin also does not have to be orange. The jack-o'-lanterns are orange. They are pumpkins. All pumpkins are squash, but not all squash are pumpkins. In this case, we've got a beautiful green and orange molded pumpkin. So I want to start by cutting the lid in which to, I've started this one already. So in starting to cut your lid, you want to go at an angle. If you were to cut straight down, your lid would fall right through. So you want to start by cutting at a, at a slight bit of an angle. I like to cut a wavy lid for two reasons. It looks more fun to me, more whimsical, and it also helps you find which direction the lid goes on to later without having to fiddle around. So here I have cut a wavy looking lid and it only goes one way every single time. This has very thick pulp in here, so I'm going to cut off some of this to not be so stringy hanging down in the face that we might make. I'm gonna put that right here. We like to save our seeds for uh, roasting and toasting. They're delicious. Again, we're gonna use the circle hole to take out the pulp and the seeds leave. <laughs> There's a lot of seeds in there. These are good not too thick not too thin seed for roasting. Yeah some people soak them after you clean them off. Well we we usually have the the stove going and an iron skillet while we're doing our pumpkins so that we can just eat the pumpkin seeds right then because we get hungry but you could clean them off, soak them in the salt water, and then get, uh, and then dry them out and roast them. I think we have a few recipes on our, on the Earthbound website that's got a few different flavors for roasting your pumpkin seeds. Now what? I need to stop if my gut. My... So, here is the damaged ugly side. So I'm gonna try to work with this I think I've got a part of an eye right here that's in some solid pumpkin. And I think I'd like to cut out a lot of this bruised, ugly area. And uh, we'll give it some pointy teeth because this is not going to be a pretty pumpkin. And uh, this will be rotted most of the way through. So we can't really use that part anyway. So I'll just put teeth where I know is solid. So here, here we have the rotted spot. We want to cut that out, but it's going to be part of our mouth. So we're going to still try to give us some teeth to work with here, but we can't use this area to put teeth because it's likely rotted all the way through. So I'm going to get my drywall saw and start cutting this mouth out. And pretty soon you won't notice that it's rotten. Well, the good thing is you don't see it on the inside, which means it's not gonna make the whole pumpkin rot super fast. No. If you could see the rotten spot all the way through, then right, it would be, too it would be soft. a little questionable for lasting. So follow your rough, your rough line. Let's get a little pointy tooth in there or two. Quick. Yeah, 
Oh, there we go. Another pointy tooth. Just be very careful not to put your hand too far in the back on the inside where you poke yourself. And I like to take the mouth out in pieces so I don't break any teeth. I think I've missed a tooth right here. There we go. Okay. Now we have an eye. Let's get our eye. You want to do the smaller parts first in a pumpkin because they're more apt to get accidentally knocked out later when you're doing the larger cuts. There, we have a bit of an eye and an eyeball. Let's make another one over here. Now, since this is a jack-o'-lantern type pumpkin, you could be using the, um, the larger of the pumpkin kit saws, right? You can. I know um, we're used to just using our saws all because they're this, or... this does fit. It does fit. It's a little flimsy, but it does work because this flesh is softer than some of the, the gourds. I'm actually going to use this around this eye um, to make right, the, the pupil. Detail. And I'm kind of pinching the, the body of the eye so as I'm sawing, I don't knock it out. Push it through. There we go. That's a cool chunk. I know. And some of the chunks I use later right? <laughs> for other places. <laughs> this might come in handy at some point. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to take and give the eye a little bit more detail. There we go. Just with my little clay scraper. We won't be able to see too much. We'll define this tooth a little bit. These are great little tools. You can order them online and you can get them at an art store. That looks like a nice one. That is a nice one. So what I would do probably with this one, although I didn't plan for it, was take a small pumpkin, carve a tiny face in it, and put it right here so it's a pumpkin eating a pumpkin. Those are so cute. <laughs> and the lid, again, if you've got the waves on it, just falls exactly into place. I think that's a great tip because you're always trying to like find, Which, well, where was it? it, where was it? And then it's like so much more obvious that way. So the other thing about carving pumpkins for Halloween is you don't want to carve them too much in advance because they will rot depending on where you live. They will rot out. Now in this case, this one molding and rotting out because you've carved it a little too soon would actually be to its benefit in that it's going to look much creepier and scarier with mold and it'll start to droop and sag. So that's not necessarily a bad thing. If you're carving a pumpkin that you're going to be very proud of, you'd want to carve it no more than a few days to a week before Halloween. And uh, you also want to treat your pumpkins like produce. In that they are. They are produce. <laughs> <laughs> and so during the day, you might want to bring them into the garage, into a cooler place, rather than have them sitting out in this hot sun all day and then put them out at night with your lights for people to enjoy. Now, there's a lot of theories on how to preserve your pumpkin longer. Yes. I know some people will soak the whole thing just to moisturize it. Um, and then, well, we won't talk about those people who actually <laughs> dip it in bleachy water because we're organic, we would never do it. Um, and then Vaseline. Vaseline, WD-40, WD vegetable oil spray, None of those things really work. I've got this stuff called um, 
it's like a, a olive oil and beeswax based cream, hand cream. Uh, looks just like Vaseline, except it's all natural. And um, I probably wouldn't do a whole bunch of huge pumpkins, but that's something you can put right on the cut edges to just get them to last a little bit longer. Yes, but mainly but just take care of cool, it. dark place. Yeah. Any heat is going to make them sag, which I made a scary witch one year that she just got better and better with every passing day. <laughs> okay. Well, then you can just make more. Yes. Right? <laughs> <laughs> just keep making them. Oh. Can you guys talk on the next one? Like, about...